So we just divided a polynomial by um, x minus 2 in the last video. And so somebody want, might want to know how to do this fast, because if you wanted to run through a bunch of numbers to check and see if they were factors, then the easiest way to do that is to shortcut it all using synthetic division. And it's really important to remember that this only works on linear divisors, which means like that or like that, but not something like that, because that's a quadratic divisor. If you wanted to, you might be able to break this up into linear components. You would get complex numbers in some instances, and that would be messy. So um, when you're getting quadratic or like a higher degree polynomial divided by another higher degree polynomial, the easiest way to go about it is to actually go back and um, just go ahead and do the longhand division. So if I remember p over q, let's see if you do or not, p is all of the factors of this number, and q is all of the factors of this number, plus or minus. So we could have a whole bunch of combinations of p over q. So you could have like 3 over 1, or 3 over 2, or 1 over 1, or dot, 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 dot. There's quite a few. And then, of course, you would take the plus or minus of any of those. So let's just look at this number right here. Is the point 3, 0 uh, a point that exists on this line? So what we're going to do is say, is this a root? Because if it's a root, then 3, 0 belongs. So 3 belongs with this factor right here. So we take this number right here should be positive because we're checking the actual number itself. Uh, so remember that when you're watching this video, change that to a plus. So we looked at this with substitution. And the way it works is you drop your leading coefficient. Remember. 2, negative 5, 6, and 3 is negative right there. Make sure to leave space for every coefficient. If there was missing a linear term, for instance, you'd want to put in a 0 there as a placeholder. It's really important. So drop your 2, and then we're going to multiply our number by whatever this is. So times 3 gives us 6, and then we add down. So this is going to become 1 times 3 gives us 3. We're going to add down, which is 9, and then multiply by 3, which gives us 27, and then, oops, 27 goes here. We're still just multiplying by 3, and then 24. So does 24 equal 0? That's the basis of the remainder theorem. No, it doesn't. So this right here is not a root. All right, now how can I use this to be helpful? Well, um, let's look at given a, so this is learning target B at this point, where we're given some factors and some roots, and we want to factor out a polynomial into its parts. So 2x plus 1 is a factor, and 8, 0 is a solution to f of x. Find remaining zeros of f of x. So this is kind of a, a tricky wording. So 2x minus 1 is a factor sorry, plus 1, and then 8, 0 is a solution. So if 8, 0 is a solution, then x minus 8 is our other factor. So that's kind of cool. Can be able to read the question and infer information out of it. So let's, I'm going to flip to the next page, make sure you've got that. So we're going to take our polynomial and we're going to do some dividing to see what we can get. So let's just do it with synthetic this time around. There's other strategies. We could have multiplied those factors together and then divided the fourth degree um, quartic by the product of those two, which would be a quadratic. So you could have done that done doing long division, but I think this is a good way to just have some experimentation trying this. So let's see. Our original function was x to the fourth minus 
15 over 2x cubed minus, oh, and then there was no zero, there was no squared term. So we can make plus or minus, it doesn't really matter. And then minus 30x, and then minus 16 was the original function. So I missed a number there, that's supposed to be 16. Okay. So see, right there, there's the zero. Don't forget about him. We'll drop our term, multiply by eight. All right, well, I'm gonna rewrite this guy as 16 over two instead of eight because that's friendly, which makes this one half. And then multiply by eight again. I'm sorry, multiply by eight and you get four. Add down four, multiply by eight, 32. Add down gives us two. Multiply by eight once more gives us Sorry, multiply by 8 gives us positive 16. Sorry, guys. Having some thinking issues. So add down again, makes 0. So a couple of things that we can do. First of all, we knew it was a factor, so we knew that this was going to equal 0. If it didn't, I would have known there was a problem. Like maybe I didn't do it right, or maybe the question was written wrong. Probably uh, it was a me issue, right? So what else is cool about this strategy is that these terms across the bottom become the coefficients of whatever the new uh, polynomial would be. So if I had done it long division, you would have found that you had 1x cubed, 1 half x squared, so on and so forth. So we'll look at what it looks like. I'll do it in a different color so we know. So this becomes 1 x to the third because we divided an x out which means there shouldn't be any x to the fourths left right x to the fourth divided by x is x to the third plus one half x squared plus four x plus two That pen is not being friendly right now, so we're going to move on to a different pen. So I also know that this is a factor. Well, how did I know that? That's, that's kind of a tricky idea. They told me that 2x plus 1 is a factor, which means that when, um, when I have x being a certain number, this total quantity is equal to 0. So let's figure out what that exact number is. So 2x therefore equals negative 1. Divide our 2 out, and there's where that negative 1 half is coming from. <clears throat> Pardon me, guys. So when I plug in negative 1 half, I should expect to get out 0 at the end. If I'm not getting out 0 at the end, I've got a real problem. So do I have any missing terms? Nope. There's 1, 1 half, 4, and 2. So that's our remainder should be 0. We're going to drop our term 1. Now multiply by what our factor is, but our root is 1 half negative, negative 1 half, 0, cool, 0 times anything is just 0, add down, 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2. Boom, 0. Yes, I did it right. Woohoo! Good job. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at what we have at this point in time. So, now I have 1x to the second plus no linear term plus 4 equals 0. Okay, so this must be our last factor. So, how do I factor? This, well, from what we know in the past, we know that this is our complex, this is going to give us a complex number. So let's figure out what x has to be. To i. So if they were asking what our four roots are, 
we would say that our four roots are 8, negative 1 half, and then plus or minus 2i. What would this whole polynomial look like factored? It would be 2x plus 1, that was the one they gave us, x minus 8, that's what we inferred, and then we divided them out, and because this factors into complex terms, we just leave it like this. So the other way that we can write p of x is like that.